Hello, it's Alex here again, uh, Victor Kilo to Papa Radio Charlie. And uh, here I am back in the workshop looking at the last radio that I put up on YouTube. This was the one that uh, we diagnosed, step-by-step -step diagnosis on, uh, on a wobbly audio. And if you'd like to go and check that video out on my YouTube channel, you'll see that we diagnosed a faulty synthesizer on this particular set. I mentioned at that time that this was a perfect candidate to to transform into a, a digital front-end uh, DDS VFO type uh, set. So um, after doing my Mark I model, which was a prototype, you can also go to my YouTube channel and you'll see a step-by-step -step guide that I put up there on, um, on my prototype, uh, how to convert um, a Klansman 320 to a, a DDS a VFO set. By the way, that set's been very successful. I've been using that on the air extensively and I'm very, very happy with the results. But I, I do want to emphasize that that particular project was a prototype project. A lot of lessons were learned in that project. A lot of tests were carried out. Um, yeah, and a lot of, um, uh, how could I say, uh, design um, alterations uh, that, I've, that I've decided to install on, on the Mark II model. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull this set down and I'm going to convert it to a, um, a digital um, VFO uh, front end Klansman 320 radio and I'm going to use all of the lessons that I learnt in, uh, in the Mark I prototype model. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go and uh, have a look um, at some of the, um, the items that I've purchased to buy um, to do this particular project. And if you'd like to follow, It'll be a step-by-step -step guide through um, the process of converting your Klansman 320 to a, a digital DDS VFO front-end Klansman 320D <laughs> Mark II. <laughs> so here we go. Let's go and let's go and do it. Okay. Um, before we get started on our project, let's have a look at what we have at the moment in the Klansman radio. And then we'll have a look at what we're going to change to make it into a DDS uh, substitute for the um, for the synthesizer. Okay, well we'll start off our, our our little story here with the with the reference oscillator unit eight. What the reference oscillator does, it makes two 1.75 megahertz signals, a square one that it shoots down to the synthesizer, and that uses that clock frequency to run the whole radio, and it also sends a sinusoidal one, because there's a filter in here that turns the square to sinusoidal to the to the motherboard, so that becomes the carrier at 1.75 megahertz as well. Okay, so away we go down here to the synthesizer, and we've got the the frequency switches on the front of the set. They give the message to the synthesizer um, what frequency you want to um, you want to uh, uh, run at, and the synthesizer decides. On a control voltage that it sends to the 3H board, which is in the in the tuner, in the tuner head, and the 3H board is the, the variable frequency oscillator, and that makes the the associated frequency that the synthesizer is asked for, and it sends that frequency both to the receiver board, which is the 3A board next door, and off down to the motherboard, which is the 6 board underneath. Not only does it um, create that, that variable frequency, but it sends um, a feedback signal back to the synthesizer, and the synthesizer looks at that, um, at that frequency coming back and alters the DC voltage to the VFO accordingly if it's not quite right. So it's a feedback loop, very, very accurate, and, um, and keeps the, uh, the set smack on frequency. Also out of the synthesizer, there's a bit of a permissive signal that gets sent to a um, uh, a gate that, uh, that that says to the radio, okay, all this is working properly, uh, and gives permission for the radio to work. Not only that, out of the synthesizer comes a two kilohertz tone signal, which is a square wave that gets sent off to the one A board, uh, which then can um, well, the one I think the one A board converts that to a, a sinusoidal um, wave, and that becomes the tone signal for the radio. You know, when you do the tuning and when you um, CW. Okay, so basically that's 
that's how the radio works now. So let's have a bit of a look at what we're going to do to um, to change things. Okay, so we'll just start off again with the, the reference oscillator. And the reference oscillator is going to stay in play, but instead of um, giving us a square wave down to the synthesizer, we're not going to use that at all. We're only going to use a sinusoidal wave um, that's going to go out here to a common point, and that's going to be uh, a common point for the for the carrier frequency. And in this particular conversion, we're also going to introduce a lower sideband conversion as part of it as well. So I'm going to put in a lower sideband oscillator as well as the um, as the uh, that's a line that's got to go across there. <laughs> Okay, so I'm putting in a lower sideband oscillator as well, and both of these two oscillators, both the 175 and the 17468, are switchable from the 12 volt side. Okay, so we're going to actually switch the power on to that to give us upper sideband and the power on here to give us lower sideband, and these will go off to the motherboard. Okay, so in place of our synthesizer, we're going to introduce a DDS. And that's going to be dialed up by an encoder that's mounted on the front on the front panel. Okay. Now the DDS is going to create our our a variable frequency, and it's going to send it off up to the to the head, the tuner head, where the three the three H board used to be, and this is going to be a, a VFO interface board where the amplitude of the waves are going to be set by by a potentiometer, and give us the correct. 300 milli, milli, millivolts um, to the receive board, which is next door, and off down to the motherboard, which is board six. Pretty easy. Okay, now as far as the receive DC voltage that's required for the the receive um, very caps to tune, we're going to put a manually controlled potentiometer on the front of the panel. Now, don't be scared by this. Um, this is a this is a non-event. You simply change to the band that you want to uh, use, um, go to the appro approximate frequency, and just adjust for maximum noise. And um, yeah, that's as easy as that, and that's your receive. It works brilliantly. We'll see that when the radio is in operation later on. Okay, we've also got a digital display that we're going to mount on the front of the panel. It's going to show us the well, the black box frequency, not not the Klansman offset frequency. It will actually be the um, the commercial frequency. So there you go. That's that's what we're going to change to. So let's get into it. Okay, this is the uh, the DDS that I've uh, chosen for the project. It's based around the AD9850 chip. These things are quite um, quite reasonable in price. You can pick them up here for you know about thirty six dollars Australian, which uh, yeah, is not a big not a big thing. Um, Unfortunately, they do come from China, and um, delivery time is quite extensive here in Australia. I mean, I waited three months, I think, to get this thing out of China. But uh, nevertheless, it seems to be quite a solidly built um, unit. Comes with absolutely no instructions whatsoever, which is a real pain. Managed to search around on the internet and found the connections for these um, plugs on the back. Um, uh, managed to go down the street and buy some uh, some uh, cabling with plugs already attached that fits o fit okay. So the output there is a, a coax type 50 ohm output, which is um, quite handy. Anyway, that's the uh, that's the unit we've picked to do the job. So uh, let's go and have a look at um, how we're going to mount it in the um, in the radio. Okay, um, here you'll see the synthesizer and unit 8, which is the reference oscillator. These are mounted on a frame um, that screw off in from the bottom of the base. You probably notice that this one's sticking out a bit. I've actually undone this one and moved it out into the service position and resecured it. So that's that's the unit um, that we're going to going to replace or we're going to remove and, and put in a substitute. And the whole point of this particular conversion is a little bit more of a modular type conversion. So what I'd like to do is mount, you know, everything in this area here uh, and sort of neaten it up in that area there. So 
here here's the uh, here's my attempt at, uh, at doing just that. Luckily, I had another frame from a, a wrecked um, a 320 radio, so I was able to build this up before stripping this one down. But if you found yourself in a position of not having one of those, and probably not many people do, you can simply remove all this and then just build it up after you get it apart. But basically what I've done with the unit that, I've, that I just mentioned there that I've bought on eBay, I've removed the top part of it, which is this part here. That just unscrews the four screws out of the top. And um, I bought some of these uh, extension cables. They, um, they're they like a ribbon cable, and um, they've got the little plug and socket, which has enabled me to, um, to, to extend this off the board. Okay. And uh, by the way, I've set it up here. And I've been able to test the entire unit before ever um, starting the conversion. So as I say, I've removed the top board and um, underneath I've mounted a plate. So I've done that with a couple of screws. You'll see them sitting there um, with the um, excess thread cut off. So I've got a little bit of steel plate bent it up and um, mounted it on the bottom of, the, um, of this particular um, frame. Mounted the, uh, the DDS onto it uh, with some sp little spacer tubes and some screws. You can see them there. And um, by removing that part there, it freed up this area here to, um, to build up a little bit of circuitry that was required as well. So let's just briefly have a look at what the circuitry here is. There's a, a filter and a, and a voltage regulator in the first part of it here. Because these DDSs, they, they generate a bit of noise, so a bit of a DC filtering on their supply. If you want to have a look at the details of that, you can go and have a look at my prototype video that's up on YouTube for the, um, the DDS mounted in the, um, in, in the Klansman 320, which was my prototype. Yeah, so I've mounted that uh, filter arrangement here, and I've also used a, um, I think it's a 7809 to get the voltage down from 9 from uh, 12 volts down to 9 volts because these things run on 9 volts. Don't try to run them on 8 volts, they just won't work. They just very dim display. Yeah, they don't recommend 12 volts, but they do recommend um, 8 volts uh, to 9 volts. So 9 volts is the optimum voltage. And over here on this part of the board, I've, um, I've cr created uh, the circuit that I designed with the triple five timer that's going to replace the 2 kilohertz um, for the um, for the tone generation of the radio, because when you remove the synthesizer, you also remove the uh, the two kilohertz uh, tone generator that's built into it. Okay, so as you see there, it's all mounted on a nice little modular uh, modular unit. So the whole idea will be that this whole unit will replace this whole unit in the um, in the radio. So there you go. That's uh, that's the plan. Before we go any further, um, I'm just going to briefly uh, describe the lower sideband conversion. Um, in my uh, prototype, the DDS had two, um, two outputs for the variable frequency and the fixed frequency, and I was able to adjust the fixed frequency oscillator to, uh, to replace the unit, um, the unit uh, 8, um, which is the reference oscillator. And by changing the frequency of the, um, the DDS fixed frequency, I could go between upper and lower sideband, which was good. But the problem with the Arduino uh, d uh, modules, the Arduino, not only the Arduino um, projects, but the Ar Arduino modules that you can buy, VFO modules like I used in my prototype, the wave shape, um, especially coming out of the fixed frequency oscillator, was atrociously square with all sorts of spurious uh, um, uh, harmonics hanging off it everywhere. And it took extensive um, filtering to get it down to um, anything like sinusoidal to use on the um, fixed frequency of the radio, just would not accept anything that was uh, too far away from sinusoidal. So that was a real pain in the neck in itself. So um, with this particular conversion, I've, I've picked a, a DDS that's only got one output could be a downside. We'll have to just wait and see with that one. So basically, looking at the the upper and lower sideband installation conversion, whatever you want to call it, there's basically three options the way that I see it. The first option is to incorporate 
A DDS that's got two outputs, as I suggested, a variable and a fixed. The fixed to look after the upper and lower sideband to replace that unit. The second option is to get hold of one of the, the chips that they use um, in the in the standard Klansman 320 uh, upper, uh, or should say lower sideband conversion. I think the, the kits are available um, from Klansman uh, Radio in, uh, in the UK. He sells the whole thing as a kit. Um, but I managed to buy one of those chips separately that was already um, pre-programmed for the for the lower sideband frequency. So the second option would be to mount that chip somewhere in this area here. And I've got this area under here earmarked um, to do that if I want to do that. So then I'll simply put a switch on the front of the radio and I'll be able to switch between the existing um, the existing unit here, which is 1.75 um, megahertz sinusoidal to uh, to the chip that'll be mounted under here, which is uh, 1.7468, which is the lower sideband. So I'll be able to do it that way. So that would be the second option. The third option would be to simply buy a kit from Klansman Radio and fit it in the standard way and have the switch on the front um, over here where they where they normally do the uh, the standard conversion. So basically three options the way that I see it for fitting um, uh, lower sideband. There is another option as well as um, not having lower sideband. I mean the world is full of these radios that don't have lower side sideband side fitted. So basically that's the way that I see it. So at, at this point in time I'm looking at getting the integrated circuit. I bought one of those as I said pre-programmed and put it in here with a switch on the front. But uh, let's have a look at the finished project and see which way I go with that. Okay, just looking at the broad plan of what I'm going to do, I'm going to virtually strip, strip the radio down, removing the, the front of the radio completely. The reason that I want to remove the radio, the front of the radio completely is I want to um, mount this pretty well flush with the front. So I'm going to cut a rectangular slot in the front of the radio to, to mount this particular unit in here um, so it mounts flush. You'll recall in my prototype um, it protruded out the front which was one of the things I didn't like about it. Um, so that's the plan to do that and I've, these come with a, a yellow and black display as, as standard but what I've done I've bought a red and with a black background display. Uh, I think it was under ten dollars and I'm going to end up using that one to try and get it to look more like, you know, the, the 1980s period. So it'll be more aesthetically correct to have that color um, um, display. So that's the whole idea, is I've got to remove the whole front of it to cut a slot in it to do that. And to do that, I've got to take all the screws out, all of the um, the, uh, the rotary switches and, and, and knobs, and uh, you know, just as a matter of course. So that um, I'll probably um, end up with something looking a lot like this when I get it off. Okay, this is a spare that I happen to have. So I'll probably be stripping it down to, to that sort of level. And then in this area here, I'll be cutting that slot out to, um, to fit the display. Okay, now not only that, I've got to remove all the, the decade switches. I've got to remove all the wiring from the decade switches that comes back to the synthesizer. And after I get all of that debris out of the way, I'm going to um, uh, look at all the wires that are left on the synthesizer and I'm going to identify them, especially the power supplies, the earths and the 110 volts, etc., etc. So of course all of those are going to be significant and, and they're going to be used in a different way. So this will eventually be completely removed. The wires will all be identified. Okay. Now the whole idea of this particular um, modular um, modular type uh, installation is the DDS here is going to generate one variable frequency um, to replace the variable frequency that's generated in the original Klansman which is generate, generated in that board there, the one, this one over here, this one here, which is the 3H board. So unlike the original where the, where the, uh, the VFO is generated in the 3H board, we're going to generate it over here in the DDS. So here in the 3H position, I've made up this little um, replacement board to go in. It's a little variable, very, very, very board. And 
into here, I'm going to bring to that terminal there, I'm going to bring in the variable frequency oscillator from the DDS. And then over here, these other two terminals, these are going to be the two um, DDSs that are required to run the radio. So I should say the, the two variable frequencies that are going to be required to run the radio. One loops across into the, the 3A board, and I've got that cable marked already which one it is. And the other one goes from here down underneath to the 6 board. Okay, once for receive, once for transmit. And you see the little potentiometers that I've got on here? There to set up the 300 um, millivolt um, peak to peak sinusoidal wave that I'm going to need for both places. Because it comes out, it will come out of the, um, of the new synthesizer as a bigger amplitude wave than what's required. So here is going to be the separation and the, um, and, and the attenuation down to the, to the right wave. A little bit of DC isolation as well with these uh, 10 nanofarad capacitors. Uh, will sort of make these both supplies independent. So that, that's going to be mounted in here. Okay. And on the front as well, I've got to mount a, a variable resistor. It's going to be the front end tuning um, for the receive, and that's going to be on here as well. If you go to my video, my uh, initial video on YouTube, you'll see how that's set up. That um, it varies a DC voltage into the receive section here varying from about, um, you know, down around 10 volts up or up to about 85 volts, something like that, which will be the tuning required for all of the bands. Okay, so that's the plan. Get in here and, and strip it down and, um, and uh, get it looking like an absolute wreck <laughs> and then putting it all back together in a new way. So the whole idea is to rebirth this radio, sticking to, you know, its natural original look as much as possible but giving it that new life and a little bit of a modern touch to it as well. So, uh, let's get into that. Right. Well, it sure looks pretty different now, doesn't it? <laughs> it is almost scary stuff. Yep, it's pretty well stripped down. Front panel's been removed. All the decade switches have been removed. All the associated cabling between the decade switches and the synthesizer have been removed. That sort of gets rid of a lot of stuff out of the way. All the remaining cables that were connected to the synthesizer have been disconnected one at a time and identified uh, using the drawings and also um, by uh, continuity, continuity testing them back to the uh, power supply. Uh, the 6 volt, 12 volt, the earths, the 110 volt. Yeah, all been done and off the, uh, off the reference oscillator as well. So. Uh, this whole section's cleared out, ready now to fit the new um, DDS in place. But before I fit the DDS in place, I want to complete the front panel and get make sure it's fitting right before um, I put it back in place, and then I'll re then I'll um, then I'll I'll put on the uh, the new D DDS in position. So that's where at, at at that stage. Okay, what I've done here, I've just um, turned the radio on its end. Um, it won't balance by itself, of course, it's too narrow at the bottom, so I've suspended it between two batteries to give it some stability there, so I can work on the tuner section, and that's what I want to talk about now. You'll recall the two boards in the tuner section, um, there was the 3H board and the 3A board, okay, and we removed the 3H board because that was the original uh, variable frequency oscillator, so we've taken that out, and that's, that's the fellow there, keep that for a good spare, because that one there is in good nick. Okay, so and we've replaced it with the um, the board that I showed you before, and this is my separation board that separates the um, the new um, variable frequency uh, to, to various parts of the radio. So what I've done, I've fitted that in place, um, and I've used all the existing cables. So I haven't had to run any new cables at all at this stage. Okay, the the uh, variable voltage cable that used to come up from the rear of the synthesizer. Um, it, it used to loop from here across, well I've just bridged it out here and we're still using that and that goes to the back of the synthesizer area and that'll join onto the, um, onto the potentiometer that'll go onto the front panel so we can tune the receiver. Okay, and there was a cable here, this one down here, this one uh, with the red on it, this one here was the feedback cable that went back to the synthesizer. So what I've done, I'm now using that as a supply um, for the new variable frequency um, oscillator up here to the board 
and that'll come from the, the new DDS output, um, connect up at the rear where the synthesizer was, come up here, and that'll be the common one that goes onto, onto the board here. So that variable frequency will be split up between two, well, between two areas, the area here, which is the 3A board, and that was the original cable that went across there before, and this cable here, which is the cable that goes down to the number six board, the motherboard. So there you go, haven't had to run any new cables at all. Fits all very, very neatly into there. All I'll have to do then is put the plate back over the top and screw it down. After, of course, I've set the um, the peak-to-peak -peak, uh, values when I get it all set up with the new DDS running, and those peak-to-peak -peak values have got to be between three and 400, um, uh, three and 400 millivolts peak-to-peak. -peak. So we'll get to that stage, I'm sure. Um, I mentioned before about a short required to earth um, to give the radio permission to transmit. The signal would normally come from the synthesizer. We don't have one of those anymore, so we need to have it permanently turned on. And here we are on um, the six um, on the six board. So that's the that's the little link there that I've that I've soldered in. You can see, I think you're pretty clear uh, on that. Uh, there it is on the six board, um, and there it is. That's the little link that I've put in, and that earths that little uh, permissive relay, well solid state relay there, which enables the radio to operate. I mentioned um, I mentioned before that I wanted to get a. A red and black LED display to uh, to make the uh, conversion look more suited to the period. Well, um, the uh, the new display just arrived, so I've I've wired it up to test it out. So have a look. Okay, there it is. So um, I hate to say this, it looks pretty good, but it's not. <laughs> uh, listen, this particular workshop is pretty gloomy and. Um, that's not that bright. It looks a lot brighter on the um, on the video, but um, the, the biggest problem is this. I'm looking at the display at an angle uh, from the from the bottom, but look what happens when we get uh, uh, 90 degrees. It disappears. So if I'm looking straight onto the front of the radio, I'll see nothing. If I want to peer down from the top, I might see something, but I doubt if I'll see anything if the sun's out. <laughs> so uh, my good idea of the um, of the red and black display uh, is just that it was a good idea it hasn't um, it hasn't turned out to be uh, useful so I would say that um, we're going to go back to uh, to the original one <clears throat> which was the uh, green background with the black display at least this one here is is very readable in, in bright light so um, Yep, unfortunately uh, it paid off to, uh, to test it on the bench before um, installing in the set. Moving along. Uh, I've cut out the, um, the section of the front where I want to mount the, um, the display. And the display will be flush mounted and it'll fit very neatly in there and be flush mounted. So that won't protrude at all. So that'll be uh, quite um, aesthetically um, uh, good. Um, as far as um, keeping keeping to the style of the original radio, um, in order to fit the LCD display in this section of the um, of the front panel, well, let's have a look at the back of it anyway. Yeah, that's where I've cut it out there. In order to uh, to fit that in, the actual plate um, of the radio comes in here and rests down here, and there's a flat plate that runs along there, and then it rises up. And goes along and rise and goes along there. Well, where it rises up here, and along along that section there, it was um, fouling with the um, with the new display. So I've had to remove a little bit of metal from the um, from the original frame of the radio. You'll see you'll see the where I've cut it um, just along here. Okay. So it's, it's about six millimeters of uh, of metal that I've had to remove along there. So what I did, I just marked it out with the texture color. And um, put this on the um, on, on a bench on a on a, a nice soft towel. It's not a big deal. It sounds horrible, but it's not. And I used a uh, I used a, a very fine hacksaw blade, and very slowly just um, hacksawed it um, along, along, and across, and and filed it up. Got rid of the booze, and now the display fits in quite neatly uh, with the front panel. So um, 
Yep, a little bit of a modification there, uh, but um, it's part of the that's part of the conversion. Okay, moving right along. Bit of progress. Um, mounted the um, the display in the front, nice and flush. So yeah, it's a nice flush fit, which hopefully will be um, quite pleasing to the eye. It's still got a, a protective film there I need to peel off, but basically that's what's going on there. Okay, so I've put the set back together again and started to do a little bit of the ancillary wiring and, and tidying up. So let's let's just talk about that. By the way, there's a, a good look at the uh, display from the rear. Okay, so there we go. All right, so yeah, look, you're going to need quite a number of earths for, for different parts of, of the uh, add-on circuitry. So what I've done, I soldered in half a dozen earths uh, all connected onto the up uh, to the main earth and by the way just speaking of earths there's a, there's a tricky little wire that runs from the back of the synthesizer up here to the power supply plug and that's the earth for the power supply plug they call it voltage divider uh, supply <laughs> uh, it's really the earth for the power supply so yeah just be, be aware of that so that also connects to the main earth here okay and um Yep, and what I've done, I've, um, I've tucked a lot of these connections underneath to get them out of the way. The three volt supply, I've sort of just um, uh, cut it off and put a bit of heat shrink over it to sort of, um, you know, make it safe, put it out of the way. Um, as far as the resistor's concerned for the, um, for the tuning of the, um, of the receive, look, um, I've put this particular one on here, just as a temporary, I'm gonna glue that on there just as a, as a temporary measure while I'm doing the testing because um, what I want to do is I want to fit a resistor, a variable resistor on the front that'll fit the original um, frequency um, selection knobs so it looks like it's part of the set but it, it, it'll, it'll in fact be our front end tuning and um, these particular resistors they're really easy to get but of course the shaft size is way too big I think there's six millimeter shafts and you have to actually drill the front of the face of the radio out to fit the um, fit the threaded section through and that's really not not appealing uh, that was one of the things that I thought on my prototype that I would do better this time uh, look there there is a, um, a resistor a variable resistor that you can get uh, would you believe from China and I've searched everywhere here in Australia to get one of these and I can't get it they're called the WH5-1A. If you put that into, into eBay, up will pop up a whole variety of variable resistors. Um, we're looking at something around 47K to do this job, and they've got a four millimeter shaft, which is perfect to, um, to put the original knobs back on and fit it in place. So until that arrives, um, I'm gonna just, uh, just run with the temporary supply. And um, um, China being such a, rel a reliable um, source of, uh, of materials, I've actually ordered two from two different suppliers. So hopefully one of them I'll get. <laughs> uh, the things we do, the things we do. Okay, so, yep, I've tidied up all of the cables along here and I've left the cables here for the, um, for the, um, the, the reference oscillator. And I've decided to go um, with the original reference oscillator and I've decided to go with the integrated circuit, pre-programmed integrated circuit uh, with a switching arrangement to switch between upper and lower sideband. And I mentioned this little section that I'd reserved. You see it tucked in there, in the back there. Um, this little, little add-on I've put onto the back. And if you look down inside that little hole, there's the chip in there. So I, I managed to get that chip from, um, from a chap in, in the UK supplied it to me and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change over um, with a switching arrangement on the front where I can change over the reference supply from the 1.75 to the 1.74 I think it's uh, 6 8 megahertz on that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use would you believe the original um, the original switch on the front here this one here which was the 10 megahertz switch so I'm going to make the zero position upper sideband and click across to the to the first position lower sideband. So that'll that'll keep in um, keep in uh, you know in the in the original look, not putting a another switch on the front. So that's the plan for that as well. So that's sort of where we're at today, and um, 
Yeah, I'll just uh, continue on and, um, and and keep keep the uh, the video rolling right through the project. Uh, just spent a few hours um, putting the interface unit uh, back here in place and uh, and wiring it all up. Okay, you'll notice that uh, that uh, the display cables I've neatly laid them uh, around and up and in, and they fit very very nicely in there actually. And I've laid the uh, the switch wires and the potentiometer wires along around and into the back. I've made all the connections that um, all the voltage connections and all of the um, the frequency connections um, to the interface board all ready to go. Okay, so what I've done after that, um, I've actually applied voltage to the various circuits here. Um, I've individually tested the um, the power supply to the to the DDS by putting a variable uh, my variable voltage supply set at 12 volts to make sure that that's working and the display is working on the front. Then I've uh, connected voltage um, to the uh, the six volt uh, six volt line to the um, to the uh, the triple five timer here. Um, so I've applied six volts to that circuit, made sure that that's oscillating at two kilohertz exactly as as it should, and I've put 12 volts onto the um, to the integrated circuit down here, make sure it's producing the the 1.7 uh, four six eight uh, megahertz. So I've individually checked all of those um, those little circuits to make sure that they they're all correct and working. And then I've connected all of the the radio supplies and uh, and outputs to the interface board. So the next thing we'll do we'll um, put the radio back together and and power it up, and then um, and have a look uh, and do some testing then. Okay, so I've connected up um, the battery supply, connected up a handset, a dummy load. So it's all ready to fire up and test it. So um, turn her on. Okay, we've got a um, good little hiss there in the in the handset. Uh, just checking the gain control. Air hiss increases, very, very good. Uh, you, you probably can't see it very well there, but that's the encoder, the rotary encoder for the frequencies, and I've actually uh, had a spare a knob, exactly the same Klansman knob that they use for the tuner and the and the, and the gain here, and I've put one of those knobs on there to keep with the um, with the style of Klansman, so it looks very very um, in place, very good. Okay, now that I've got it turned on, um, what I what I've then done is I've checked for my voltages. So I've got my six volt, my twelve volt. Um, uh, from the power supply working fine. I've come around to the front. I've checked my um, 110 volts here for the um, for the variac for the um, for the tuner. That's that's fine. I've chewed the tuner. Uh, checked the voltage there. It, cha it changes beautifully. And I've no. Uh, you probably have a look at the display there. I've got it set on that frequency there. So I've just tuned the voltage up to give me the maximum hiss um, at that. So that's tuned correctly for that frequency which is all looking good. Okay, the next thing I needed to do then was to um, to check for the um, for the uh, upper and lower sideband um, reference oscillators, and I've done that to make sure that they're both uh, switching correctly from the, the front switch here, remember? Um, zero is upper sideband, click to one position. Lower sideband, that's working perfectly, um, which left just the, the main um, variable frequency oscillator to set up. So, what I've actually done, I've monitored the um, monitored the uh, this little board. Remember that little one that I've um, I put up here in the three H position. You'll see it there on the right hand side with the two little potentiometers. Yeah, um, I've set up the um, the peak to peak value there uh, at three hundred milli millivolts for the for the receive three A board, and then I've gone underneath to the um, to the uh, test point. Uh, test point L uh, underneath the uh, the radio and you'll recall that there's a, a voltage divider network on there to reduce the the 300 uh, millivolts coming out of the, fr um, the reference I should say that the main frequency oscillator down to 150 millivolts peak to peak so what I've done I've monitored that point there 
and then varied the, uh, the little potentiometer to give me exactly the 150 milliwatts. So I've got all my voltages set up to the right values. Um, of course, the, the reference oscillator, if you want to check it down there on the main board, that's uh, also down there at, uh, at, at the terminal 8. And by the way, for the 1.75 upper side band, it was 300 millivolts. And for the, 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 um, the, the lower side band, one which is produced by the, the IC that I purchased, um, it's down a little bit. It's down about 250 millivolts, but I'm sure that'll be, um, that'll be okay. So the radio at the moment seems to be performing very well. You'll, you'll notice that the, the display is um, very nice and big. And it's very bright. It's so bright that it's, it's blowing out there. And that should operate extremely well in bright sunlight, which is <laughs> a real plus. So let's just put the radio um, through a couple of uh, uh, tests and, 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 see, uh, and see how it performs. Okay, I've got it turned on. Um, I've got it in the ant position, connected up to a 50 ohm dummy load. So uh, you'll recall the, the, um, we've got a 2 kilohertz. Uh, triple five timer set up for the um, for the tone. So how, let's see how we go. Sounds very very normal, very very normal, and working well, working well. Okay, um, up to low power, and uh, we'll have a bit of a look there. Uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, it's working very very well there on. Um, on low power, up to high power. Uh, one, two, three, four, one, two. <whistles> yep, she's working very, very well on there as well. Uh, we'll just, while we're there, we'll, we'll check the battery check. Yep, battery check's working well. So the radio appears to be working very, very normally. So what I'll, I'll have to do now, I think, is um, is start to uh, to work on the on the frequency calibration because these DDSs that um, that come out of the box so to speak um, the frequency that they say on the front may not be the exact frequency that um, that they're putting out it'll be close but there's a, a calculation um, set up in the menu that I think I'm going to have to start looking at I'm going to be connecting up an antenna and um, and see if I can listen for some stations and um, see how they sound and and start thinking about perhaps calibrating the, um, the, the, the the oscillator inside my DDS to, um, to read correctly and to give me a great audio sound as well. So, so far, very, very happy with the, um, with the project. It's come along a long way, but uh, it's very gratifying to get to this stage to find out it's, um, it's working as planned, which is uh, good. Um, for those uh, who, who may not recall, um, Potentiometers, I'm still waiting to get a four millimeter sharp potentiometer to fit into the original hole And I'm going to put an original knob on it as well. So it's going to look very very Klansman like in appearance uh, Cosmetically, so I'll be very happy when that comes But I think a little bit of water's got to pass under the bridge before that arrives from China So I may have another go at trying to pr procure one of those in Australia four millimeter shaft so far I haven't had any luck, but uh, Time goes on. Well, just got back from the um, the local park where I set up and, and operate um, portable and um, just completely tested the radio up there. Um, managed to make two contacts. It was pretty late in the afternoon when I arrived. I got uh, one contact on 40 meters and another good contact on 20 meters. So I was able to test the radio virtually for the, uh, for the both bands that I use most frequently. I have no reason to believe that the other bands wouldn't work either. Um, I mentioned in my last um, my last little um, clip that um, that I was looking to get a a replacement rheostat, a mini four four millimeter um, shaft size. I tried again in Australia, um, tried all the usual suspects. I could could not buy one, so I got a little bit creative and decided to manufacture something out of one of these uh, original decade switches. So what I've done, I've got the original, oh, I've got a, a, a replacement potentiometer, a brand new one, and I've drilled the shaft, drilled a hole down inside the shaft and cut it off. And I actually roughed up the, um, the shaft of here and roughed up the hole. And I uh, managed to glue the, uh, the, this shaft into the, um, into the new rheostat using epoxy glue. 
and then I've used um, sort of silicon glue around the outside to hold the outside. So this actually works quite well. Um, yeah, this was the Mark I version. It proved to be just a little bit wide this way. Um, and it was a bit squeezy in there and when pressure was put on the back of it, it got very tight to turn So I, I made a mark II version and reduced the uh, that, that size there by about three mils and and there it is It works extremely well and it looks you know, it looks quite uh, Yeah, quite 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 the part So um, yeah, so she's she's looking very very Klansman like in appearance uh, except for the uh, for the digital display there so yeah, it's been tested. Um, it runs perfectly. So uh, I'm very, very happy with the project so far. Okay, I've just pulled it down to um, to fit the, um, the tuning unit. I've just put that all back in place. I also did a last check on the, um, before I put that in place, I just did a last check on the, um, on the two um, uh, variable frequency oscillator wave amplitudes and they hadn't moved. They were still uh, perfectly where I set them. So I'm really happy with that. So this, this section is now finished, completed. Um, yeah, so I just move over and have a last look here at the actual fitting of the DDS in the uh, in place of the synthesizer. And you'll see it's quite a, ni a, a nice little neat fit there. Yeah, it's um, it fits really well actually and the case goes on very easy. There's no obstructions there. We'll have a last look at the uh, behind the uh, behind the display. Yeah, there it is there. So. I've got all the cables neatly laid out, um, giving them a little loop of slack uh, behind the, the display. And there's the, uh, the potentiometer that I've put in place, the, um, the modified potentiometer there, um, in place there behind the filter. And you'll see there's plenty of, um, plenty of room there where we had um, a press fit before. So with the Mark I version of the, um, of the, uh, the converted uh, potentiometer so that I could fit the original knobs on. So I'll have one last look at the face, I think, um, of the radio before I put it together. And the whole plan now is to um, to get it back together and, and give it a nice coat of um, of Klansman, um, Klansman green. So, yeah, there she is there. Um, almost looking very, very Klansman-like with a difference. Nice flush uh, display, nothing protruding as, as I had in my Mark I version. So, yep, job now. Put it back together, put all the screws back in, give it a paint. And um, yeah, completed job. So we'll have a look at that uh, at the end there. Okay, just before we head off up to the park to try the radio out, I just want to take this opportunity to explain all of the little um, modules that I've um, that I've introduced into the set, um, the circuitry on those particular modules. So we'll just go through those one at a time here. So the very first one here is the the carrier frequency. I've mentioned already that I've put a changeover switch on the on the face uh, plate, and I've used the old 10 megahertz switch. Uh, zero position is upper sideband, and number one position is lower sideband. So that's the changeover switch that I've used there. Here I've got the original um, the original unit eight, which is a 1.75 upper sideband oscillator, off here to a common point. Switching over to the other one, we've got a um, an IC here that's been pre-programmed uh, for 1.7468 which is the lower sideband frequency this operates on 5 volts so I've used a 7805 to get the voltage down to 5 volts for this one it comes out of here as a square wave um, this one here is a lovely sinusoidal wave so we need to do the same to this this particular filter arrangement here uh, will give you an, an absolute beautiful sinusoidal wave and these are RF chokes RF chokes you can't get the exact values just get as close as you can they'll be pretty right um, as far as the amp amplitude of the of what's required is the 300 millivolts peak to peak adjusting this resistor here will give you that that value and it'll end up somewhere between 2.2k and about 3.9 okay so that's pretty well explanation of that and that's all put onto the board okay the next one here is the um the, uh, the variable frequency oscillator that comes out of the DDS, it shoots over to the turret area where it goes onto a, a, a little board that I showed you that I made that fits in the 3H position. And on that 3H position board, I've got these components um, mounted. Uh, you'll see the 100, 200 and 200 gives you a 50 ohm load. And that's what's required out of the DDS, 50 ohm load. 
These are potentiometers with a 10 nanofarad DC isolation capacitor on each one. This one here can be adjusted for the 300 millivolts peak to peak that's required for the 3A board, which is next door to the 3H board. And over here we've got um, we've got the the adjustment here for the 300 milli millivolts that goes down to the number six board. And by the way, when it gets down to the number six board, it goes through a little voltage divider down there that takes it down to 150 millivolts peak to peak. So you're better off going on to the test point L on 6E board, adjusting your potentiometer to get that value there. Okay, so that's basically that one. Uh, what have we got next? Next we got the DDS supplies. Okay, for, for the DDS, these things are inherently noisy devices. We don't want any hiss on, on the audio receiver of our 320D. So I've introduced this uh, supply filtering um, circuit here. And this was supplied to me by Peter down in Victoria, VK3YE. Works absolutely brilliantly. A couple of simple components there takes away all of that hiss. The DDS voltage, they recommend between eight and nine volts. I tried eight, doesn't work. Um, you know, low, low, low brilliance on the, um, on the readout doesn't look good at all. So I used a, a 7809 to get the voltage from 12 volts here, a little bit of voltage drop across there. The rest of the voltage drops across here, get it to nine volts, works brilliantly. Okay, that's a nice little circuit that needs to be put onto your um, supply of your DDS. The triple five timer that I've um, that I've used for the two kilohertz uh, tone frequency, um, it, it, I've also introduced the same filter circuit onto that. This is running all the time, so I didn't want any noise to come back into the set through through the supply side on the six volt. So a little bit of isolation here does the trick. Okay, so that's another little um, circuitry you need to uh, start thinking about. The actual triple five timer for the two kilohertz tone generation, that's basically the circuitry that I've used. So if you want to freeze on that and copy those down, that's basically what I've used. When it comes out of here on terminal three, need a, a voltage divider set up here to get the the 1.75 peak to peak voltage that's required to go into the, the 1A board. Okay, so simple network will do that for you. By the way, on the 1A board, there's a, a filter in there that turns this square to sinusoidal, and that shoots down to the number six board from there. So basically, that's required as well. Lastly, um, we, we're, we're talking about a, a, a DC control voltage for the very cap voltages on the 3A receive board. So I'm using the 110 volts that's, that's available at the um, original power supply that used to be used in the synthesizer and I've used this voltage divider network a couple of fixed voltages here that maximizes my voltage here around about I don't know 90 and up here about six or something something like that so it gives me a, a variation on the potentiometer between six and about 90 volts and that's the full range of DC voltage required to run the very caps for the your tuning of your receive up on the 3A board Notice there's a capacitor here. Look, I put it in. It's probably not required, but I, it's there anyway. So, yeah. Okay, so basically that's the secret to all the circuitry required for the modification. See you guys up at the park. Okay, what a lovely afternoon up here in the park. Perfect afternoon to try out the, uh, the, uh, the set. So I'm sitting up here on top of the hill. And I've got my antenna of choice set up. My, um, my half wave N fed vertical for 20 meter band, uh, which is also a quarter wave vertical for the 40 meter band, incorporating my matching coupler here that I manufacture and, uh, and market. So if you're interested in getting a quote for one of those, very high efficiency unit, this is the one that I use to do all my DX work. Just give me a, a, a message on the, by email. Uh, my, email address will appear on the screen here now um, so if you're interested give me a call on that so let's let's just go down here and, and have a look and there's yeah. our there's our finished radio there sitting in the in the boot of my car on top of a standard one my favorite standard one there underneath so um, yeah basically let's let's try it out so 
turning onto Antat. And I'm set up here on the 20 metre band. What a lovely big readout. Oh, is that easy to read or what? And this is in bright sunlight too, which is really good. Very, very happy with that. Oh, okay. There's, a, there's someone on that frequency already. Okay, so just to demonstrate um, how to tune. So this is the um, this is the tune. Got a little bit of talk. You hear that? It's as easy to tune as that. Just tune for maximum noise, and away you go. Okay, so now that I've turned it on and, and checked it out, what I'll do is I'll I'll see if I can grab a station and uh, make a call. Yeah, Victor Kilo to Papa Radio Charlie, mate. It's Alex here. Our portable station up in the park this afternoon, over. Okay, port portable where? I'm a portable station up in my local park here, just south of Sydney, mate, in Campbelltown, New South Wales, over. Oh, Roger that. Yeah, we've spoken before, Alex. We've spoken before. My name is Todd Texas, Ontario, Denmark, Denmark. Hopefully you copy before I'm, I'm now beaming your way, Gabe. Yes, Todd. Yeah, good to speak to you again, mate. Your signal's very, very good, mate. You'll be a 59 my way. Lot, the band is very noisy here this afternoon, over. Yeah, yeah, it's um, quite a lot of static here for some reason. Quite a lot of static. I was facing uh, Lowell Path when you called. Well, as you can see, the set's operating as normal. <laughs> Typical Klansman. Um, gets out quite well. And look, just going over um, what we've got here again, We've got the typical Klansman face, looking very, very Klansman-like with all the Klansman knobs. We've got a lovely, a lovely flush uh, readout. Very, very bright. Can read out easily in bright light, as you can see there. I'm operating in almost uh, direct sunlight here. And uh, yeah, very, very, very easy radio to use. Yeah, and, uh, and the tuning for the receive is extremely easy to operate as well. So if I wanted to go down to uh, lower sideband, I would simply switch this switch to the one and, um, and adjust my, my variable frequency oscillator down to um, seven megahertz. And uh, yeah, and retune here for, the, for, the, um, for, the, for that particular band and, uh, and I'd be on the air as well. So who's this? It sounds like an Australian station talking into the US. So, yeah, I can't wait to uh, to make some more contacts and, and sit here this afternoon and enjoy the um, the the, uh, the converted radio. And look um, to all those people out there that uh, have got these radios that are, are faulty with a synthesizer, uh, either completely clapped with no um, no lock uh, at all on it, or have got the wobbly audio like I had. Um, there is there is an answer. There is there is a um, an alternative that you can do. A little bit of aggravation, but wow, what a fa fabulous radio. And I'm gonna get a lot of use out of this one, I can tell you. So this is Alex here, Victor Kilo 2, Papa Radio Charlie, signing off for this one. Any questions, please email me. Catch us all on the air, 73. Uh, Victor Kilo 2, Papa Radio Charlie, pedestrian portable, over. Yeah, K7GI, this is Victor Kilo, 2 Papa Radio, Charlie Portable. Great signal into uh, into New South Wales this afternoon. Yeah, it's Alex here, mate, just south of Sydney, over. Hey, I'm using a military radio here this afternoon, um, a, a Klansman 320 British Army radio. And this is the second um, one that I've converted to a digital front end. So um, I've brought a couple of wrecks back to life, over. Okay, this is Victor Kilo 2, Papa Radio Charlie, calling K7 Mike Quebec Victor, over. Yeah, Alex, you're great. VK2, uh, Papa Romeo Charlie, Kilo 7 Mike Quebec Victor. 
Oh, thank you very much. Yes, I'm transmitting now at about, it's about 30 watts. It could be about 29, about 30. That's that's the direct power straight out of the radio. But what I'll do now, Jim, I'll, I'll switch down to low power, which is about two watts, over. Yeah, give it a try. I'll stand by. Go ahead, Alex. K7, Mike, Quebec, Victor. Yeah, K7, Mike, Quebec, Victor. This is Victor Kilo 2, Papa, Radio Charlie. Calling you on two watts, over. Yeah, Alex, I can just hear you in there above the noise. You are just above the noise, uh, Alex, uh, at, that, uh, at that QRP power. So uh, I'll copy, over. Yeah, well done, mate. Thank you very much for that test, Jim. I've jumped back up to 30 watts now, mate. But wow, there you go. Halfway around the world on two watts, over. Not too bad, my friend. Not too bad. <laughs> Yeah, Kilo Juliet 7, Lima, November. You say you were on the side and you were listening into that uh, that two watt conversation and you were hearing me well uh, as well, over. Yes, I was hearing you quite well, even, even at two watts. And the call uh, is Kilo Juliet 7, Lima, Uniform, November. Lima, United, Norway. Okay, no worries. Lima, United, Norway. <laughs> I tell you what, when conditions are, are, are okay, uh, Rick, you know, it, it's it's amazing what you can do, over. Yeah, it is for sure. Uh, I'm very new to ham radio and played around on the 11-meter band and talked uh, all over the place with about 